Hey everyone, welcome back. I hope you had a good break. So we'll get right into it, see what you got in store for the week, and then uh, we'll also talk about what the kind of tentative plan right now is to get to the end of the semester and finish off the course. So first off today, um, you obviously have the video you're watching right now and you'll have a Juno pod on the nervous system and muscle reflexes. So in general, you'll see that these four topics kind of, I mean, obviously they're all related to the course, but they're kind of picked and chosen from uh, various units. It's just stuff we didn't get to cover for whatever reason, it just didn't work out timing-wise, but I think they're key topics that you should have an understanding of, as well as they're pretty fun topics to get into. So uh, I just want to go through almost kind of this week, uh, these four Juno pods from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, just those four miscellaneous topics and then that'll be your last kind of learning for the year. Um, <clears throat> so with that being said, you will have a quiz on those four Juno pods. That's uh, as you can see in your upcoming stuff. You have uh, right now that's planned for next Thursday. So um, we'll talk about uh, the plans for everything right now. Um, just real quickly on the nervous system, it's dealing with the response so again your brain sends the impulse out that electrical impulse is called the action potential then it talks about reaching the neuromuscular junction and then sending it off to the muscle and going into our sliding filament so it can be kind of confusing if you don't follow the diagrams and then again just one thing that i want to kind of point out motor neuron motor unit two different things axon so axon an axion, A-X-I-O-N, two different things as well. So an axon would be a general pathway that a motor, or sorry, that an impulse goes through. An axion is the end of the motor neuron itself, okay? Then a motor unit is comprised of the uh, muscle fibers that that motor unit, or sorry, a motor unit is comprised of the motor neuron, the neural pathway or axon that it's uh, related to and then the muscle fibers that it controls and then the motor neuron itself is just what releases uh, acetylcholine it's at the end of a nerve cell so you really do need to pay attention to those diagrams and those videos if you don't utilize them it's a really short note but you need to actually just slowly think these things through and follow along with the diagram it makes a lot more sense Again, acetylcholine, I don't know if I wrote it out formally, it's referred to as a neurotransmitter. Again, if you think of that term, neurotransmitter, you see neurological and you see transmission, so you know it's carrying a nerve impulse along and it's kind of a key component. Um, and then reflexes, it briefly just gets into, right, with a normal, uh, well, I mean, you have different sensory uh, neurons in your body, so those things identify various stimulus that are presented to you from your five senses. <clears throat> and typically, you read those, um, or sorry, I shouldn't say read, read be one example, but you get the information, you interpret it, and you determine a response to that stimuli that you were given. But with a reflex, uh, the transmission, there's no, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, in the, uh, the transmission of the stimuli to the motor neuron, there's no uh, relay to the brain. So again, the stimuli, let's say it's touching a hot stove, that impulse, okay, the stove is hot, it doesn't get sent up to the brain, right? It kind of gets to the spinal cord, which is a part of the central nervous system. The inner neuron's there, no interpretation, determine the response, it gets sent back. It's kind of a basic decision, right? Anything where you're in danger, your body's going to have a, a pretty easy response to it. It's kind of, uh, doesn't need to be interpreted. So that's kind of the main difference just with the reflexes. There's no relay back to the brain. It goes to the inner neurons in between them. Okay, so what do you have ahead for your week? So growth and development. So uh, just kind of briefly what I'm going to try and do with these. I haven't written them out yet again. We don't usually get, to, uh, this is, we're usually out of content at this point, right? We're kind of gearing up for exams. But this is stuff um, that I either learned when I was taking this course that we didn't get to or stuff that I learned maybe a little bit about more in university and I found a little bit more fascinating. Uh, and that's more like the LTAD. So growth and development, we'll talk about kind of the different age groups and how you vary stuff based on age groups. So 
Obviously, for an example, if you are training various age groups, you're going to want to change what kind of workouts you do, what kind of weight load or rest you would give them, stuff like that. Um, how are bones and stuff developed like that. And then the LTAD is called the Long-Term Athlete Development Plan. And essentially, it's something where they look at what should you be doing along these milestones or sorry, what are some of these various milestones that you would see at these age groups for an athlete to be successful? It's fairly interesting. I hope we can get kind of, I want to gear it to more towards discussion about uh, developing particular athletes. So again, some athletes start to specify their sport really early on, or I should say specialize. <clears throat> so again, uh, something we've talked about throughout the year, year is the concept that an athlete who plays multiple sports can become more versatile and that's actually beneficial for them. That gets true up to about a certain point. Typically for most sports, it's around uh, 14 to 15. So it's good to play multiple sports all throughout elementary school, a little bit of early high school. And then really at that point, you kind of got to specialize and bear down in one and maybe play a slight second one for a, an alternation on the off season. But even then, um, usually it is specialization at that point and then some sports they specialize way later like lacrosse for example most players don't actually specialize in it until or start specializing in until about 18 uh, and that's including pro players so it's kind of interesting to see that route so we'll dive in a little bit there motor learning and skills analysis so motor learning we're actually going to touch a little bit on in this juno pod as it mentions as you do a, a movement more repetitively that neural pathway gets more developed, so meaning your body becomes more efficient at utilizing it. And then you become more mastered at the skill, right? Because your neural pathways work a lot more efficiently. That means you can take the stimuli and relay everything a lot quicker and the muscles can react to those stimuli a lot quicker. And then lastly, uh, psychology and sport. So we're just gonna look at some of the mental aspects and how they impact your performance. And then Friday, you'll have a discussion post with a response. It'll be a psychology related one. So I'll probably have you guys dig up a study and just kind of um, explain it. And then I think that's probably going to be our one. Pick up a psychology related uh, study and see how that psychology impacted performance. Uh, but let's not set that in stone. That's just uh, something good right now. So that's your plan for the week. Like I mentioned, you're going to have a quiz on these four Juno pods. It's going to be scheduled for the 14th. I might put it out a couple days earlier just so you guys can kind of maybe get it done earlier and then it'll stay open until probably the Monday so you'll have a pretty wide window of when you can actually choose to do it. Uh, summative test. So the last day, uh, you're just going to have a 50 multiple choice uh, test. Nothing on too fine of detail from any one point. Uh, it's just going to be kind of like 50 key points from the year and just a multiple choice test. It will be graded as a test, not an exam or anything, so it'll be just as worth as much as your other unit test. And again, uh, just 50 multiple choice. Uh, next Friday, you'll have one more discussion post, but because it's such a quick turnaround and then we're done on the 20th, there won't be a response just that way. Uh, you post it and then you don't have to worry about uh, other people getting it done. Again, just quick turnaround there. Uh, and then video assignment. So this is the one I'll come back later in the week. I'm hoping to post it on Thursday here. Um, so it might come out Friday, depending on it, but it's going to be a video assignment where essentially you're going to teach a crash course on a subject we haven't talked about, but that does relate to kinesiology. So for example, maybe you wonder why bones crack and you hear that sound, maybe you want to talk more about that. We didn't really go into too much detail. Or maybe you want to know more about one of these topics that we talked about this week. So it's essentially you going to be taking a little mini uh, concept or principle or something or other from kinesiology that we didn't discuss. Um, and again, you'll have a lot of uh, area to play or room to play with, I should say. I'll be pretty open to a lot of topics. It doesn't have to be, you know, touched every unit that we talked about, but uh, essentially anything about your body where you wonder why it works like that, and we didn't get to answer that, it could even be a little more biology oriented. That's what I would want to see, but probably keep it like kind of between performance and the body's operations. Again, because that's the difference between kinesiology and biology, right? 
Um, so my plan with that video assignment is that you guys will post your videos. Uh, you'll have like Monday, Tuesday to work on it. Wednesday, you'll have to post it by 5 p.m. And I'm gonna make like a, a class YouTube page or something or other. I don't know, maybe we'll use Jupyter if they allow you to submit videos. And then you'll also just have to respond to another person's video. Um, the responses I don't think will make overly extensive, but it's gonna be just kind of like a peer evaluation. Um, or maybe I'll make that as a, a private peer evaluation, just a little less public, it's probably a little smarter. Um, yeah, so if you guys have any questions about that, or maybe if you have any suggestions on a topic you'd like to learn about or something, or maybe for me to mention for these ones, feel free to shoot me a message. Like I said, this is all tentative right now. Things could easily change just based on whether we're in class or online all the time. But right now we're going to kind of pretend like we're going to be online definitively. And that's kind of my game plan. So, what was the last thing? You know how to think of it all. I'll message you guys. Okay, have a good week, guys, and I'll talk to you later on.